Hi girls, I'm back to read to read the rest of the book, The Riddle of the Robin. And at the beginning of the book, we found that the girls, they discovered the little bird, the robin, living in their garden, and they brought him gifts, and they found out that he didn't like seeds, that he much more preferred the worms and the little bugs. And I know sometimes you can go to a park or something, you can look under a log and you can see those little creepies, little crawling animals, little bugs, and you think, ooh, but it's actually kind of like, oh, because it's kind of amazing to see all their legs and see them wiggling and see all the different kinds you can see under the, the logs or the little worms that crawl in the dirt. Anyway, we're going to continue on with chapter four, and this chapter is called where to go. Every day the robin perched on its favorite branch in the maple tree and greeted the welly wishers when they came to the garden. Ashlyn got used to picking up worms and beetles and she helped Kendall and Willa, Willa collect food for the for the robin. Camille kept its bird bath full of water and Emerson led them all in singing to the tune of Mary had a little lamb. Sing to us your song so sweet, song so sweet, song so sweet. Sing to us your song so sweet, to wheat, to wheat, to wheat. Since you're back, we know it's spring, know it's spring, know it's spring. Since you're back, we know it's spring, to wheat, to wheat, to wheat. And the robin would always sing back with great gusto, to wheat, to wheat, to wheat. One night, the robin had after the robin had been in the garden for two weeks or so, a big storm came. The wind blew hard, it whistled and whirled and wound its way around the branches, making them toss up and down wildly. And when the willy wishers came to the garden the next day, the sky was still gray and heavy with rain clouds. The girls rushed to the maple tree, but for the first time in two weeks, the skinny branch bobbed up and down, looking empty and forlorn, and the robin was nowhere. Desperately, the girls searched all around the maple tree and the playhouse. Robin, here, Robin, Robin, Robin. Splishy, splashy, take a bathy. Want some beetles, bugs, worms, and grubs? To weed. Where are you, Robin? But there was no answer. The robin was gone. Chapter five, following Willa. Oh dear, said Camille. Do you think our robin is gone forever? Maybe it flew to another part of the garden, said Willa, where it felt safer during the storm. It might be hurt, said Ashlyn, or lost. Let's go look for it, said Emerson. Willa rushed to the playhouse. She hung her binoculars around her neck and tucked her bird book a map of the garden, and her compass into her backpack. She put granola bars, her canteen full of water, and cups in her backpack, too. Then she rushed back outside again. Is everybody ready? Willa asked. Yes, said the Welly Wishers. Let's go. And off they went. Do you think we can find our robin? asked Ashlyn, as Willa led the girls deeper into Aunt Miranda's garden. If we keep our eyes open, said Willa, and look carefully at all the trees and bushes and plants. What's this plant? asked Camille, stooping down. Watch out, said Willa. That's poisonous ivy, and it's trouble. Camille jumped away so quickly that she fell backwards over a log and landed thump on her bottom. Are you hurt? asked Kendall. Kindly as she helped Camille stand up. No, said Camille, brushing off her skirt. She joked, but that poison ivy, ivy caused me trouble and I didn't even touch it. The girls walked quietly, looking high and low for the robin. Oh, exclaimed Kendall. She tugged on Willa's sleeve and pointed up. Look, a nest. Do you think it belongs to our robin? Willa looked at the nest through her binoculars. Then she gave her binoculars to the other girls so that they could take turns using them too. And while she looked in her bird book, 
That's not a robin's nest, she said. That's a wood duck's nest. And Willa showed the girls the picture of the bird, of her bird, of a wood duck on its nest. Oh, in her bird book of a wood duck on its nest. A duck built a nest in a tree, said Kendall. That's kind of quackers, joked Ashlyn. Quackers, quackers, said Emerson. I'm getting hungry. Can we have our snacks now? Maybe you could eat like a bird, said Camille with a smile. You know, beetles, bugs, worms, and grubs. That sounds so delicious. No, thank you, said Emerson firmly. Willa looked around. The muddy ground was soggy with puddles. It was too wet to sit here, she she said. Let's go back and sit on the benches near the playhouse and eat our snacks. But I'm hungry now, said Emerson. And I'm tired, said Kendall. And we haven't found our robin yet, added Ashlyn. Willa tried to cheer her friends up. Maybe the robin is back in the maple tree waiting for us right now, she said. Let's go see. Which is the way back, asked Camille. Willa looked around. I'm not sure, she said. We went off the path when we saw the duck's nest. Emerson slumped onto a, a tree stump. My feet are tired, she grumped. I bet we walked a hundred miles looking for our robin. And now we'll have to walk 200 miles to get home. Kendall spoke quietly to Willa. You know the way home, right, Willa? Oh no, said Ashlyn. I can't believe it. We're lost. Uh-oh. Chapter six is called, Which Way's Which? We're not lost, said Camille. We just don't know where we are. Isn't that exactly what being lost is? Well, Emerson. <laughs> We're not lost, said Willa, because I have this compass. She held the round, shiny compass in her palm so that all the welly wishers could see it. How does it work, said, asked Kendall. See the arrow, said Willa? It points north, and that's our way home. Aunt Miranda once told me that the playhouse is in the north corner of the garden. It won't take long to get there. I hope not, muttered Emerson. Her shoulders and her mouth and even her flowers on her hat look droopy. Come on, said Willow, follow me. And Willa used her trusty compass and led the welly wishers through the trees in the direction the arrow was pointing. Soon they saw the playhouse. Carrot the bunny was waiting for them. Hooray, cheered Ashlyn and Camille. Carrot looks hoppy to see us, joked Kendall. At last, sighed Emerson. Willa took granola bars out of her backpack and Ashlyn filled cups with cool, refreshing water from Willa's canteen. Thanks for the snacks, Willa, said the girls. But before anyone bit a bite of her granola bar, look, shouted Willa, jumping up, our robin. All the girls leaped up. <laughs> Where is it, asked Camille. On the playhouse roof, said Willa. Hello, Robin, called Ashlyn. To wheat, sang Emerson. To wheat, echoed all the girls. Expecting the robin to answer them with a sweet tweet, they started to sing their friendly song. Sing to us your song so sweet, song so sweet, song. Screeched, cried the robin. Scree, scra, scree, scra, scree, scra, it shrieked at the girls. Then the robin dove at the girls, at the surprised girls, squawking furiously and flapping its wings at them, as if to say, go away, go away, go away. Help, yelped the girls. But Robin, it's us, your friends, cried Camille. Scree, scra, scree, scra, scree, scra scolded the robin, sounding more and more angry. Then it flew straight at the girls like an arrow shot from a bow. It flew so close that they could feel its wings stir the air. The robin dove low and the girls gasped. 
it was headed right towards Carrot's sticky up ears. Uh oh. Chapter 7 Willa finds out. Camille was afraid that the robin would hurt Carrot. She scooped Carrot up in her arms and held the bunny close to her chest as she ran away from the playhouse. Emerson, Ashlyn, Kendall, and Willa followed her, hurrying to get away from the robin. Emerson's eyes filled with tears. That robin scared me, she shuddered. I don't like that robin anymore. Kendall asked Willa, what is, why is the robin acting this way? I don't know, said Willa in a shaky voice. Then she remembered that in her bird book, it said that when an animal's behavior changed, there was usually a good reason. That could be the reason their friend the robin had become so unfriendly all of a sudden. Willa gathered up all of her courage and said, I'll find out. Be careful, whispered Ashlyn. Slowly and silently, Willa crept back toward the playhouse. The robin cawed loudly from the roof. Scree, scraw! And Willa stood on a tree stump and peered through her binoculars. Suddenly, she gasped. What is it? asked the welly wishers. Oh, no, Willa hooted. The robin is shooing us away from the playhouse for a very good reason, for the best reason in the world. Okay, let's find out. Chapter eight. All's well that ends welly. The robin had made a nest in Emerson's boot, explained Willa. And in the nest, there are one, two, three, four babies. Our robin is protecting its family. Oh, the Willow wishers sighed happily. Baby birds in my boot, squeaked Emerson. Your boot's a cute birdhouse, Emerson, joked Kendall. The Welly wishers took turns looking at the robin's family through Willa's binoculars. Ashlyn began to chuckle. Ha <laughs> ha, look, she said. The girls all watched as the robin swooped down and pulled up a big wiggly worm from a mud puddle. Then the robin flew up to the nest and fed the worm to the babies. The baby robins like their wiggly wiggly worm spaghetti, said Camille. That reminds me, said Emerson, we never had our snack and I'm starving. I'm as hungry as those baby robins. Suddenly, Willa understood, just as there was a good reason why the robin's behavior had changed, there was a good reason why Emerson's had, too. She was hungry and tired. Willa smiled at Emerson and said kindly, I'm hungry, too. Let's have our snacks. And just then, it started to rain. The girls all crowded under a tree. I wish we could go inside the playhouse, said Ashlyn but I'm afraid we'll upset the robin. I have an idea, said Kendall. The boot is over the door. If we climb in through the back window very, very quietly, we won't bother the robins. So on tiptoe, trying hard not to giggle, the girls crept around to the back of the playhouse and one by one, they climbed in the windows, in the window. Once they were inside, they ate their snacks. Now we're all safe and happy in our nest said Ashlyn, just like the Robin family. Inside the cozy playhouse, very, very softly, the Welly Wishers sang, sing to us your song so sweet, to eat, to eat, to eat. And from the cozy nest on top of the playhouse came the sound of the Robin agreeing, to eat. And the four baby Robins sang along happily, to eat, to eat, to eat, to eat. And that's the end of the story. Can you believe it? A little family of robins. Ah, I love the birds in the springtime. And that is the end of The Riddle of the Robin. Hope you loved it. And when I come down on Thursday, um, 
we can do some crafts and maybe have a little tea party in the garden. Okay. Love you girls. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.